Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and welcome to our part one of what'll probably be a three or a four part series on the brand new audio interface, the Neumann MT48. A lot of you have asked me about this interface since it came out and I was lucky enough to get my hands on one so I could bring these series of videos to you. So today what we're gonna do in this video is I have the top 15 features that I really like about this interface. And there's a ton of stuff in this audio interface. We're gonna go through the top five, I think the most important things in this unit. That's what we're gonna do in this video. And then in the next video, we're actually gonna plug in a couple different microphones so you can hear the preamps and how they sound. And then we'll maybe even play a little acoustic guitar so you can hear what that sounds like when we record through the MT-48. And then we'll do a video where I give you an overall summary of my likes and dislikes. What do I really love about it? What do I think could be improved? And this is something I can recommend to you. So before we get started, make sure you like, share, subscribe. And again, if this is your first time here, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I want to give you a free mixing course. It's right on the homepage. Go to the homepage. You'll see a big orange button. You can't miss it. It's my gift to you just for visiting Home Recording Made Easy. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to give you something else for free. So before we get started, first, I want to make a full disclosure. The only way this audio interface comes to you today here at Home Recording Made Easy is through our good buddies at Sweetwater. Sweetwater was so kind to send me one of these and they're, they're these things are hot to trot, man. They're not easy to find. Everybody, as I'm sitting at the, as I'm recording this video today, everybody's out of stock on these, I've been told. But you guys have asked me for it. In several, several video comments, you asked me about this particular interface. I reached out to Sweetwater. They had one left in stock and they sent it to me. So thank you so much, Sweetwater. If you want to check out the new the Neumann MT48, the link will be in the description box below. And yes, that is my affiliate link. But as always, you know how it works here, right? They don't get a chance to see the video. They don't tell me what to say. You know Uncle Dave is going to tell you what he loves about it, what I don't like about it, and whether I recommend it. You know that if you've been here for any length of time. Okay, so thank you so much, Sweetwater. I love yous. You love them. Make sure you check out the links in the description box below. So here it is. Here's the beautiful MT48. So let's go through, and I got my, my, my list here, got my list of notes here, the 15 things that I like about this audio interface, or 15 things I like and or their features. We're gonna get into a whole likes, dislikes video, like I said, at the end of this series. So let's start with number one. The very first thing I like about this thing is the small footprints and the overall build quality, okay? The first feature, it's made out of aluminum, it's built like a tank, it's Neumann. You know it's not gonna be cheap garbage. It's only gonna be the of the highest quality, and it is. It looks it, it feels it, and they got a lot of stuff packed into this thing, which we're gonna go through in such a small footprint. If you wanna compare it and say, well, how big is it really? Let me show you a couple of things that kind of give you some scale to see what it's like, because I got it zoomed up here on the camera. I'm gonna show you my universal audio Apollo Solo interface, which is another desktop interface. If I put the Solo right over the top of it, the Solo is just a tiny bit smaller than this. Just a tiny bit smaller. Okay, so it's about the size of an Apollo Solo. Super compact. Let me give you something else to kind of give you a, 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 gu a guide here. Here is an Xbox gaming controller. Let me get it up on camera here. Oh, move it over. Okay. So comparatively speaking to an Xbox gaming controller, it isn't much bigger than that. It is super small and compact. That's a huge feature here. So that is awesome. So it's about the size of a Solo. It's probably one of the smaller desktop uh, audio interfaces that I've seen. And when you really talk about all the features in this thing, it, it's head and shoulders above most of them from a feature rich standpoint. So that's the first thing. Number two, the other, oh, and the other thing I love, the other feature about this, you got the gorgeous touch screen, which we'll talk about. Number two feature is that you don't need to use a software application to control this thing. Everything can be done from the touch screen, this big jog wheel, which we're gonna talk about, and the buttons right on the unit. You don't need to have this thing with a separate piece of software that kind of sits between your interface and your DAW kind of like the Universal Audio Apollo, where you have the console software, which is a beautiful piece of software, by the way. Um, you don't need to do that with this. It all can be done right from the box if you want. However, 
feature number three is that yes, you can control this with a desktop app, which is cool. So if you feel like your workflow is where you want to have this on your desktop so you can control all its features, you can do that as well. And another really cool added benefit to this is not only is there is a desktop app, but there's also a web app. And what the web application, and we'll do this in another video as well, we'll do a whole video walking through the app, is that you can control it with an iPhone or tablet, smartphone, tablet. So if you are remote across the room, across the studio in another room, you can control the Neumann MT48 with a mobile app using their web app. And you can also control it right on your desktop, Mac or PC, if you want that as well. So you have three different ways you can work with it if you like, that's feature number three. Feature number four, which you can't see because I don't want to take it, I don't want to flip it over, but on the bottom, there's a quarter 20 a screw where you can mount this to a mic stand if you want which can be really convenient if you think about it. I know me, for me personally, this would be a really cool feature. Yes, it's cool to have it on the desktop, but let's say you are, you know, you're recording yourself and you're sitting in a chair and you're playing guitar and you, uh, and you, you know, you don't want to be too close to the desk. You got a microphone set up. You'll say you're playing acoustic, for example, and you're kind of sitting back here, you know, and you got your, your guitar in your hand. Now, if you, you can't see, but right now the, the, it's just out of, I'm, I'm stretching my arm all the way and I can barely touch the interface because I have to sit back enough away from my workstation to record my guitar with a microphone. Having the MT48 on a mic stand can be very convenient where I can get it off the table and get it right next to me where I'm gonna be recording, which is really cool. So that's another feature that would be, that's really kind of handy that you don't really see in, in a desktop audio interface. I don't think my Apollo Solo has that, does it? No, it does not, it doesn't have that at all. So yeah, so okay. So that's a really cool, uh, cool feature as well. Uh, number five is we have a ton of create, a uh, ton of creativity, yes, but also a ton of connectivity. It is a four in, eight out audio interface, has more connectivity than most audio interfaces in this class, in this small footprint, which is really great. Number six, and again, these are no particular order, but number six, that Neumann is working with merging technologies for the preamps and the, and the uh, analog to digital converters. Now, um, merging technologies is known in the converter, high-end audio converter, audio interface space. Um, they're a company out in Europe, I think it's in Switzerland possibly, or Sweden or Switzerland, where they um, they make really high-end audio analog to digital converters. That is in this box, okay? They, they worked on the preamps and the converters. They, and we have 136 dB of dynamic range in this unit with, those, with that technology. Most audio interfaces kind of cap out between 118 and about 120, 123. This has 136 dB of dynamic range, which is great. Ultra pristine, also uh, ultra clean preamps. Number seven, just mentioned it. We have ultra clean, low noise, and we'll you'll hear this in the next video, with 78 dB of gain in the preamps in this box. So the converters, the preamps, the dynamic range, the amount of gain that's on top in this thing far outshines most other stuff on the market, especially again in the smaller desktop mobile uh, footprint, which is fantastic. Uh, feature number eight is we also have two headphone jacks on this, uh, which is not completely unique, but it's really, really cool. But what I will tell you about the uh, about the headphone preamps, and again, you can't hear this on, cam uh, on a video, but I've listened to these headphone preamps. Now, what I'm currently using to record this video, and what I record most of my YouTube videos with, my audio interface that I use is a Rodecaster Pro 2, which is kind of a live streaming little mini mixer uh, interface kind of a thing with uh, headphones on it. I will tell you that the headphones in the Rodecaster Pro and most headphones uh, sockets that I use on most audio interfaces, once you get up a pot, you turn up about 11, 12 o'clock noon, you try to get them nice and loud, they get very noisy. A lot of noise floor, a lot of hiss in the background. I hate that, especially in the Rodecaster. This thing, plug in the headphones, you can jack the thing all the way up to where you can't even stand it, it's so loud. They are dead quiet. Amazing, amazing um, headphone amplifiers in these things. And there's enough, uh, and there's enough uh, you know, juice in this thing where you can drive any set of headphones, any kind of impedance headphones, this thing can handle no problem whatsoever. So this thing is really great. Probably the best headphones uh, amplifiers I've heard in, in a unit. I've had lots of audio interfaces, Universal Audio Apollos, Rodecaster Pros, PreSonus interfaces. I've had them all. This thing, the best headphone amplifiers I've ever heard. That's number eight. Number nine, 
You have a talkback mic on here, so if you want to use it in like a control room situation, which is really cool. And you also have uh, the ability to record the talkback mic, which is something that you may want to do as an extra uh, mic input. Number 10, you have a, um, I can't see it on the back here, but you have an AES uh, 67 uh, connection, which is, uh, which is great for networking and hooking up other gear, other audio converters, audio interfaces. It all can be done with the AES 67. Uh, jack and that is just like a cat5 type of a cable which makes it really flexible number 11 each one of the four mixes here we have uh, a mix a uh, speaker a speaker b headphone one headphone two they all have their own separate mixers so that means that you can have separate mixes for each one of those which is really cool so four independent mixers that are co completely customizable so you can customize each mix for headphone one, headphone two, again, all done from the touchscreen. Really cool feature. This thing has a ton, and this will be number 12 feature, a ton of DSP power in it. Each one of the individual channels has its own EQ, its own compressor, its own gate limiter, its own reverb on it as well. So you can customize that per channel, which I'll show you in a bit. Number 13 is that on every individual channel, you can, um, you can, either record the EQ and the compression settings that you set up on your individual channel, or you can just monitor it, or you can do both at the same time. So if you wanna record a vocal track, let's say with some compression on the an EQ, you can either just monitor it in your headphones, or you can go ahead and you can record that, or you can do them both simultaneously and then you can pick and choose later at mixing, which can be really handy. Now the reverb is only a comfort reverb, meaning it's only for monitoring, it does not print, but really cool if you're working with singers and those kinds of things. So that's really cool. Um, and then the last one, number 15, is you can also create presets and save them with the EQ and the compression and all of that stuff. So those are 15 of the of the main features I find on the on this unit. So let's take a like a just a quick little walkthrough. And again, we'll get more depth in this in the next video. But if you look at the beautiful touchscreen here, we have a beautiful touchscreen. We have a series of buttons along the bottom. This is our home button here, this little diamonds. Okay, I'll show you what that does in a minute. We have a speaker A, speaker B. You can have two sets of monitors hooked up to this, or you can have speaker B as quarter inch. Um, that you can actually uh, hook this up to other gear if you'd like. Um, we have our headphone one, and you'll see headphone two. And again, we can completely change the mix here right on the touch screen. You can see I'm moving the faders with my fingers there. And if I go back to headphone one, headphone two, you can have completely independent mixes. We have our talk back here, right here. So we can do that, we can talk back. And then we also have a mute here as well if we wanna mute the output. We have this beautiful, uh, nice, really well-built, very, very smooth jog wheel, which will help you control all the parameters, depending on whether you have A, B, one, or two. For the headphones chosen, the jog wheel will turn up the volume, the main volume up or down for that particular input, either A, B, or the headphones, which is really cool, okay? Now, on the top here, in the mixer, we'll go back to A here, we're in, um, we have mic one, two, three, four, four, four analog inputs. If we just touch this again, all from the touch screen, you don't need to use an application. We tap this, we're on mic one and we, we're presented with a bunch of choices. We have preamp, EQ, dynamics, mute. We can name it, we can color code it, we can group it, we can link it with the right, we can link the channels as well. Every one of these channels, you can do that. If I hit the preamp here, the preamp pops up. We have mic one, mic two, right? We're on mic one here, we, have, we can turn the mic or line if we're gonna you know, our line level, okay? Mic level, we could turn the pad on or off. We have a 12 dB pad or a 24 dB pad, which is really cool. Or we can cut it. If we just hit the, hit the wheel there in the center, we can use our jog wheel to adjust the preamp here, which is really nice, okay? We also can do the phase flip. We have a low cut that we can turn on at 40 hertz, 60 hertz, or 80 hertz. Again, super convenient. And then we could turn 48 volts on or off. This is all per channel. So every one of these can be customized for that. If we hit the home button again, and then we hit mic one again, that was our preamp. We can go to our EQ. We have a four band parametric EQ, which is really cool. Once again, can all be controlled with the desktop app or just right on the box itself. We'll do the desktop app in another video. 
Once again, if we touch a point on the screen, we can use our jog wheel to manipulate that, right? We could turn it on and off if we want by hitting the frequency. We can turn the gain up or down. See that? We can adjust the Q value for all of those things as well. Really cool, can all be saved as a preset. We can turn it on and off just by hitting the EQ on and off button right there as well. We can dim it, we could put it in mono. There's our EQ. If we wanna get back to the home screen, we just hit this diamond. You go right back, hit mic one again. Now we can go to dynamics. Same thing, we got, it. we got a full compressor gate and limiter in this thing. And again, on this beautiful touchscreen, which makes it really, really convenient. Okay, once again, I can hit the dynamics and use my jog wheel and I can turn this like this. We have attack and release, all your usual suspects. We have compressor, we have a gate, and we have a limiter per channel. We have our input and our threshold controls here. We can use our finger to drag and change the threshold. And I will tell you that the screen, yes, is super, super responsive, much like your iPhone or your iPad. It's very, uh, you know, easy to use, well thought out. It's not one of these old touch screens that kind of sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. No, it, what, what little I've played with this, it works really well. It's really well. You don't have to hit it once, twice, three, four times to get things to work. We've all seen that before. No, no, no. This thing works beautifully. Okay. Go back home. Hit mic one again. That was EQ Dynamics. We can mute the channel there if we want to do that. Right. Can unmute it. Okay. We can name it. If we want to name the track, right? It's called mic one by default, but maybe mic one is my guitar. Maybe mic two is my vocal. You can name that with this nice little keyboard here as well. And we can go back out, oops, hit mic one again. We can change the color if we wanna change the color. If you prefer to do that, we can do that, awesome. We can group them, we can link it to the rights, we can link like channels one and two together, which is really, really cool. So all you have to do is hit this little mic button and it pops up this little subset of menus. If you were to just, uh, let's see, hit the home button the second time, Okay, there's our faders. If we hit it a second time, we can get to the preamp, the EQ, the dynamics just by touching this button. There's our EQ. There's our, whoop, go to the, the preamp, okay? Hit the diamonds, we can go to dynamics. So however you wanna work, we can also control the reverb. Again, my microphone's not plugged into this. We'll test this in the next video when we listen to the preamps, but you have reverb. Again, a comfort reverb, not that it can be printed into the DAW, but you have it there for your vocalist to get a little bit of reverb on his or her vocals. Really cool. So just by hitting the home button, we'll pull up this little menu for preamp EQ dynamics reverb, hitting it again. And if you want to get up, if you want to see the pop-up box, you hit mic one on the screen and there's the pop-up box, which not only gives you preamp EQ dynamics and all of that, but gives you a couple of more choices to customize the channel. Okay. That is an overview of the touch screen inside of this too, where you can really dive down deep and you really wanna read the manual. We're not gonna go through every single setting, but just going into the menu here, we have all kinds of different things we can do for buses, routing. We can, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do here, settings, and then you have a whole array of different settings on how you wanna set the routing, depending on your use case, what your, what interface, what DAW you're using, what kind of speakers and so on and so forth, any additional equipment. We have optical ins and outs, audio in and outs, audio inputs, USB IO, monitoring, meters. I mean, it just, the thing has got a lot of stuff in it is what I'm trying to say. We're not gonna go through a user manual on how to use every feature, but just know that there is a ton of customization that you can use in this thing. And we just hit exit here. You can go back and you can save, you can save this, you can reboot to the factory. And if you wanna get back to the main home screen, you just hit that diamonds. Oh, there it goes and it brings us back again. Okay, so along the side here on this touch screen too, again at the top, we have our main volume here, what we use with the jog wheel. We have mix one here, we can go to mix two, right? Remember I told you every one of the channels has its own mixer. We hit the mix button, we can go to mix three, right? Oops, we can dim it, we can put it into mono, hit the mix button again, we can go to mix four, we can import settings, we can route things to buses, bus EQ, bus dynamics, it's crazy. The way you can have these things down to a bus. It's like having a little mini hardware mixer in digital format inside of this thing. It's really crazy. It's insane how much stuff is in this thing. Some may say it has so many features. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but I gotta be honest, it's quite simple. 
as you know, I didn't say this at the beginning of the video. Uh, the way I bring these videos to you and the way I like to test them out is I get them in, I plug them in, I make sure they work. I get them hooked up to the computer and then I turn them on and I just fiddle with it. I never had to open up the manual. I usually don't get on the website unless there's a problem and I have to figure out what to do. I wanna show you what a, what a real world experience is if you wanna just get up and running. So just by me going ahead and just you know hitting a couple of buttons and kind of figuring out, it is super intuitive, even though you can go really deep and you'd wanna read the manual for that. But it's, it's, it seems like it's a lot of stuff, but it is well thought out, intuitive and, and fairly basic. So those are kind of the 15 features of this thing, the overall features, again, there's a lot more, and the overall look at the touchscreen and where the main sections of the touchscreen are. As I said, in the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop a microphone in here, maybe we'll test out a couple of mics. I got my headset mic, maybe I'll get a, you know, a Shure SM7B, maybe a, um, a condenser microphone, and let, and let us hear the actual preamps in this thing, and I'll give you a feel for that. I'll plug my headphones into it and give you kind of an in real time how the headphones kind of sound. Um, and then we may also set up some EQ and compression on the voice so you can hear how that kind of sounds. And then I might even pop out an acoustic guitar, maybe record some acoustic guitar through this thing to kind of you know, give you a feel for what it sounds like and how easy this thing is to use. And then in the following videos, we'll do one on just the web app and also the desktop app. So you can kind of take a look at that. And then we'll finally finish up with the likes and dislikes and that'll give us our three, four videos for this particular thing. But I will tell you between, if you're watching this video when it first gets posted and you're waiting for the other videos and you just, you're just anxious, you wanna know, Dave, do you recommend it? Do you recommend it? I will tell you this, for what this thing has inside of it, all the rich things, feature rich things that are in this thing. If you're looking for a, an all-in-one box, desktop audio interface that's small, that can be portable, that has a ton of flexibility, and you're only looking to record two or three or four sources at simultaneously, and most people that have a unit like this are usually recording one instrument at a time, two instruments at a time, and you're not looking to record a full band all simultaneously, this thing is killer. It is. Uh, it's on the pricey side. Yes, it's almost $1,900. That's probably the most expensive little desktop audio interface in its class as I sit here and record this video. But it's Neumann. It's ultra high quality. I can tell you from just listening to the headphones, I'm blown away how by how good the headphones sound in this thing. And it's got everything you need in one box. I mean, it's an all-in-one solution. It is. So if you're in that budget, and you don't want to wait for all the other videos and you want to know right away, I want to place my order, Dave. I want to get on the list so when they come in, I can get them at Sweetwater. You won't be disappointed with this. I can promise you that. So anyway, thank you so much for taking our first look at the Neumann MT-48. Again, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell because over the next couple of weeks, you're going to see a couple of more videos on this, as I said. And then if you want to get one for yourself, click the link in the description box, go out to Sweetwater. Thank you so much in advance for using my affiliate link. I love you all for it. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, thanks for sticking around till the end. I want to give you something else for free. So again, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Get that free mixing course that's right on the homepage. You can't miss it again. I want to help you out. I want to get you on the journey to getting better at the craft of mixing, taught in a very non-technical way. If you're someone new to mixing or fairly new to mixing, or you're confused by EQ compression and all of that, get this course. It's free. You're going to love it. Once you take that course, if you want to then check out some of my other full length, full featured training courses, and we have everything from EQ compression, mixing, mastering, recording, all the way from beginners, all the way up through advanced and everything in between, I want to give you a 25% discount coupon Use the coupon code YouTube25. That will take 25% off any training course on my website. So make sure you do that. And once again, thank you to Sweetwater for sending me this because I'll tell you what, these things are like the hot tamale, man. Everyone's trying to get a hold of these. You can't get them right now. And Sweetwater actually saved one for me to send it to me so I can do these videos for you. And I can't thank Sweetwater enough. You know, they're my place of choice when you're going to buy gear. Go check out Sweetwater today. Use those affiliate links if you would. Thank you so much in advance. And until the next Neumann MT48 video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.